I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Welcome everyone to the first session of Dragons of War. I am the Dungeon Master and we are joining uh, several new players to my games. So we are going to start with an overview of Tenken Earth. So give me just one second to pull up the map. <clears throat> Pardon if our cat is just roaming around. That's mad again. Ooh, I've heard. Cats do that. All right, so here we go. Now you guys should all be able to see a map loading. It might take a little bit because it's uh, it's a big it's a big file, um, but. It should be loading now, so just let me know when it uh, pops up for you guys. All right, I see it loading. A um, no question: it's... So, which uh, realm is this part of? Is this your realm, or is this like Forgotten Realms or uh, uh, Eberron? I I completely homebrew all of all of my uh, world. It is um, borrowed from, you know, some stuff uh, in the world is borrowed from, for instance, uh, Warhammer. Uh, if you're familiar with Warhammer fantasy at all, um, I have a kingdom called Bretonia. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so just things like that are, are borrowed. Uh, I do have a al Qadim which was a a uh, Middle Eastern themed 
campaign box set for the second edition of Dungeons and Dragons, and I really enjoyed that, so I included a uh, version of that uh, land in my realm. Uh, same with Rokugan. Um, I think that's it for the uh, borrowed names and all of that, but I, I adapted them, you know, for my world, so they're not even the same maps or you know anything like that but just a lot of the themes and then the names were borrowed um but otherwise it's uh not a part of any of the standard campaign settings uh, although there will be a lot of similarities uh for example ravenloft uh, is very influential in my Shadowfell uh, plane of existence. So that was Greek to me. Uh, basically, I don't use any <laughs> of the official settings. Oh, I, got I, I got yeah. it. I got it. I know I got it. I'm, I'm kind of half joking here as I'm looking at Tanya, and she's sort of looking at me like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know... Um, don't uh, don't rely on any knowledge you might have, because uh, it won't help you here. No, I don't. It's good any. not to know anything. <laughs> All right. Yep. All right. So, uh, does everyone have the map in front of them now? No. No. Still listed as loaded for me. Still loading oh. for me. I see a, yeah, I I see a bunch of ice flows. Oh, here we are. I got to scroll out. Um. Yep. And if I'm you sorry. use the arrow in the right hand corner there's a down and to the left and an up and to the right arrow the up and to the right arrow will dock it into the into the window and then your mouse uh wheel scrolling will allow you to zoom in and out there's a gold box with four directional arrows at the bottom right that is how you pan around Indeed. Took me a while to get a hang of this. Mine's still not loading, but... It's okay. She can see mine at this point. Gabriel's, is yours up? Yep. Mine just came up. Okay. Andrea? Yeah, I've got it. Okay. John? Hello, John, are you there? Uh, looks like he's trying to talk, but it's not coming through. At least that's what I see on a little. Oh, is Discord lighting up for his? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds uh, like he's muted, basically. Yeah. Um... John, I assume you know all the, uh, you know, troubleshooting steps for trying to get your mic connected, uh, disconnect, reconnect, unplug it, replug it, uh, etc. Um, check your settings, of course. He's switching to audio, he said. All right, is it working? Yep, yes, sir. Now you're good. All, right. All right. So, uh, can you see the map, John? Yes, sir. Good to go. Awesome. All right. Uh, so, with a quorum's worth of uh, players able to see the map, we're going to begin. If you zoom all the way out, you should be on the left hand side of the map where you are looking at the kingdom of Bretonia, Eglia, Shaith Kalora, and we're just going to begin with a really, really brief overview of the world in order to give all of your characters a 
general understanding of what they should know about the world. Now, you know, this is not a modern society with, you know, Google Maps and, and you know, everything to be able to have a very in-depth, like, full understanding. And a lot of what you guys are going to know is not going to be based on, like, first-hand or even reliable second-hand information, but rather, like, you know, you you would have heard of these other kingdoms but might not have ever traveled there uh, just because the world is big, walking takes a long time, and, you know, most people live and die in a, you know, 100 mile radius of where they were born. Being heroes and adventurers, that obviously, uh, you know, can be somewhat different for you. Uh, but still, having traveled the whole world is a very, very rare feat. So, just a little preface there as to why you're only going to have a very limited scope of knowledge of the world so using a um, basic history of the world timeline here air thallus the island um, at the top there is the elven home island and the eladrin are the elves who were born on the Elven home island while it is in the Fey Wild, and um, they lived there for millennia. But through a wearing down of the veil between the planes, the Fey Wild and the material plane began to shift over into each other and air thallus is at the nexus of that you know point where they connect and and shift between each other and so the eladrin elves ended up on the prime material plane here their whole island did and they were stuck here for hundreds and thousands of years and all of the elves who were born after the island shifted to the prime material plane were high elves and the ones who were born off of the island are the wood elves and wild elves and then there's also, you know, like dark elves and all of that. But that's a whole different tale that we won't get fully into. Anyway, the elves of Air Thallus conquered primitive man and um, took over entire sections of the coast of the mainland there because they had uh, the most advanced technology and magic man was little more than cavemen at the time and so the elves viewed them as you know trainable pet monkeys and so they they enslaved man and traded and had diplomatic relations with the dwarves who had just recently broken free of the uh, giants who had enslaved the dwarves. And uh, so the dwarves had just recently fought a war uh, to free themselves and set up their kingdoms in the fallen kingdoms of the giants and took all of their wealth after they had driven them into the north. And so the elves showed up and... They at first had diplomatic relations and trade, but then eventually, after hundreds and hundreds of years, there was a falling out between the elves and the dwarves, 
and it's the same old cliched tale of nobody knows exactly how or when or who started what but it is now eternal enmity and uh the dwarves especially hold a grudge that they just will never let go of when it comes to the elves and so they fought a war and the humans also joined with the dwarves and the elven civil war that led to the split with the dark elves was happening at the same time and the combination of all of that was too much the elves were forced to retreat back to their island which coincidentally then also shifted back to the feywild and has been missing now for over 2000 years so for the last 2000 years mankind has been allowed to grow without the influence of the of the elves and the eladrin however not all of the elves left and shayeth kalora is an entire elven kingdom inside the kingdom of bretonia that is basically not known to the rest of the outside world at least not openly you know at the very least and shayeth kalora would be the wood elves as well as a percentage of the population is wild elves um they are very druidic and you know worship nature gods and all of that the kingdom of bretonia is your classic uh camelot um you know type of idealized medieval society it it's still a a uh monarchical kingdom so you know there's definitely poor peasants who suffer and you know wealthy nobles who who have grand balls and so you know when i say idealized i of course mean you know to where it has the veneer of the shining knights and uh chivalry and all of that that's also where uh, a majority of paladins come from then you have the caldonian empire which actually is just starting to rebuild it was the major force for the first 1500 years after um the defeat of the elves in fact it was kaldar old kaldar there that was like the biggest and strongest kingdom of man that defeated the elves not single-handedly by any stretch but they were uh they 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 were gone gondor you know they they were the ones who got all the credit and um old kaldar conquered most of the of the map and at least from old kaldar going west and, and they conquered all of the caldonian empire eglia most of carpathia you know the border kingdoms all of that was part of the caldonian empire and only bretonia and the very mountainous region of carpathia was able to hold out and and not be a part of what is essentially a a, a parallel of the roman empire um after the fall of caldonia 500 years ago nations like eglia and carpathia rose uh to to prominence and then there was a falling out with uh eglia and carpathia and a faction of eglians who were uh loyal to carpathia formed new eglia that's their land over there the border kingdoms 
is still technically a part of the um, confederacy of of states of nations that make up the old Caledonian Empire, but they are the Eastern European uh, states, like the Baltic states and all of that, to where each of them alone is not all that powerful, and they just make up a area collectively known as the border kingdoms, but it's not really one full nation like how the other, um, like the kingdom of Bretonia is ruled by the king of Bretonia and he rules that whole area. The border kingdoms, each of the provinces is its own city state that controls that section of the border kingdoms. So it's very like poor kingdoms compared to the rest. Um, Carpathia is your typical Romanian, Transylvania, uh, you know, dark mountainous regions with uh, superstitious peasants. Um Eglia is very libertarian and forward-thinking. Um, New Eglia is very religious. al Qadim is a Middle Eastern parallel um, where you'll find a lot of the, like, genies and... Um, sphinxes and you know just all all of the those themes are you know concentrated down there in al Qadim and al Fakirum. the horde of the wilds if you scroll to the right a little now uh the horde of the wilds is basically unclaimed land filled with monsters and beast men uh oh yeah Kisden and Har Craig those are the two dwarven kingdoms um they are much reduced from the Halcyon days of the heights of the dwarven empire it at first was very beneficial to the dwarves to trade with men and they prospered but eventually um they became too paranoid of of a repeat of what happened with the elves and so the dwarves just like sealed themselves into their mountains and so now they have vast untold numbers of wealth but nobody knows just like what's going on with them because they've cut off all contact that's not all dwarves there are hill dwarves that live around the mountains that still have a lot of contact with humans but the mountain dwarves have cut off all contact with uh just about anyone uh then you have the horde which is orcs goblins trolls uh some giants especially hill giants uh you know just all of the monstrous races that are not accepted in proper civilization and that would also be where the bugbears would come from zarash uh so you know you probably would have come from somewhere in the horde probably a border kingdom that uh a border town that does have contact because you know unlike a lot of fantasy games um it's not oh there's an orc kill it on sight like especially along the border there is communication and trade and peace you know where where it can be found um 
I'm excited to be part of the horde. Yes. <laughs> and, and so, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times there is war, um, you know, but it's, it's not war based just upon the fact that they're orcs or they're humans. It's about control of farmable land that can produce, you know, food and resources for your peoples. And so um, the Horde is very tribal, but there's a lot of them, like just so many. That's why it's called the Horde. And that's the problem with the land where you guys are going to be starting in. Frageshelmir is uh, the free land and it is called that because that's some of the first people who resisted the Caldonian Empire's expansion. Um, they're basically Vikings. And so Angelgrund, uh, Jutinverold, and Frageshelmir are very uh, parallel analogous to your uh, Nordic lands. And uh, especially Jutunvarold there, that is where there used to be a lot of frost giants. Uh, now it's mostly Goliaths, but it is said that there are still frost giants in that um, snow-covered part far to the north there. The blue is like a tundra, and the white is like complete frost cover. And then the ice flow above that is water that is either uh, frozen most of the time, or at the very least still has like huge floating glaciers uh even after the ice breaks up just like the north atlantic and uh frageshelmir they are such fierce raiders and conquerors that they actually took the lands of greenyard from old kaldar old kaldar used to uh cover half of the Caledonian Empire there and all of Greenyard, but, you know, due to falling apart, uh, now the proper Caledonian Empire uh, controls most of that and they've left old Kaldar. Um, it's, it's kind of like allowing Rome to be its own entity, but the rest of, of Italy is is now you know italy and not part of the roman empire uh but they left old kaldar as like you know memories or whatever and greenyard there that is very fertile farming land that the viking raiders of frageshelmir won from old kaldar um, you know, they were like, look, we're just going to keep coming. And they were like, all right, fine, whatever, have it. And so, uh, that is where you guys find yourself. Now, the rest of the lands to the east there are basically just known as the eastern lands where you'll find exotic races such as dragonborn in the kaljeshki empire to the north tieflings from the five kingdoms in the middle there and then fierce samurai warriors from the shogunate of rokugan um Eierbach and nosos are known as uh trading nations that also have a lot of heroes that come out of there. Uh, Nosos is kind of like um, where a lot of the 
ancient Greek mythology stuff comes from. Uh, Gorgons and um, Minotaurs are found in the mountains of Knossos there. You know, just uh, a lot of that theme comes from that. And Eierbach is all the rest of the stuff from, you know, your basic fantasy that didn't neatly fit into any of the other areas there. And uh, so the Dragonborn amongst you originally came from the Kaljeshki Empire. Your your parents or grandparents at the very least did. Because that's where all of the Dragonborn are with very, very few exceptions. There might be one or two you know, families of Dragonborn that, you know, settled outside of the Kaljeshki Empire. But without other Dragonborns around, those families die off. And so almost 99% of the, of the Dragonborn in the world come from that. They have a very Russian theme to them. But of course, Dragonborn are themed after all of the different types of dragons and therefore have as eclectic of tastes as the many varied types of dragons that exist. So you guys, you know, have traveled here because the, you know, life of of living in the Kaljeshki Empire just wasn't for you. Or perhaps, like I said, perhaps your parents or whatever had already left. So that's for you to decide for your backstory. But the point is that for whatever reason, all of you find yourselves here in Green Yard. And now we're going to switch to a more defined map. Uh, I imagine I should have come to this place for my for my my for the sake of my faith in the stars since in the north it's more clear to see the stars sure so now it might take a second for this to load so just let me know when it loads And feel free to stop me with any questions that you might have, um, you know, especially when it pertains to your homelands and all of that. I have a question. Yes. Um, so as an elder and elf. Yes. So I would come from that one island. Is that island existing now or is it like in the Fey realm? Like what? Yeah. So it just recently within the last uh, decade phased back into uh, this realm. But because the Eldrin elves are so long lived and on the Fey Wild, they are actually immortal. Once you phase back over to the prime material plane, you start to age uh, again. And so you can actually die if, if you stay here for long enough. But it takes like thousands of years. Um, but on the Fey Wild, you're immortal. But anyway, uh, since some of them, you know, still remember what happened, like now they're staying isolated. But of course, Eldrin elves are very chaotic in their alignment. They they do whatever they want. And so not all of the Eldrin have stayed put. Also, you could have technically been here since uh, before, but that would make you very, very old. And uh, I don't know if that's where you wanted to go with that. So, Yeah, I don't think I'm... But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you can be, you know, a quote-unquote young Eldrin and be anywhere from, you know, 50 to 500 years old and you would still be relatively young 
uh, you know, for Eldrin standards, uh, 50 would be extremely young, actually. But even 500, you would be, you know, considered like just a young adult, essentially. And um, when when the fa when you phased back over from the Fey Wild, you know, being young and and rash, you might have decided to get a little bit of wanderlust and uh, you know popped on over. All right, yeah, that that sounds that sounds fairly good to that. I just wanted to make sure since I didn't know if it was just not existing anymore. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, it, it's, it's definitely a, a thing where you don't know when it's going to shift again, you know, and so it, it really comes down to not all elves are, made for elven society and that's why even after they were defeated some of them stayed behind on the main island and the mainland and didn't go back to the elven island but some of them are so obsessed with like their immortality that like they try to stay on the elven island and phase back to the to the fey wild when they can i imagine mom has a question about the uh where the tabaxi come from i i don't know if she does uh gabriel would you like to pose that question for her yes so where did the tabaxi come from yes specifically the kind that looked like ocelots well um all of the tabaxi uh, come from the southern continent, which is not uh, pictured here. Um, I, I have the map, um, but I didn't upload it to this campaign because uh, you had... You had stated that you wanted to start here in um, Fragesselmere. Yeah. And so the southern continent is very, very, very far removed from the rest of this world. In fact, most people have not even heard of it. And the few that have heard of it have never seen it. Um, there are ships that travel in between, but it is a very dangerous journey. Um, mm -hmm. I believe now I might be getting this wrong. Uh, I, I love history and part of history is, you know, the history of navigation and sailing and all of that. Um, so, so I do I think I remember this correctly, but if I'm wrong, I apologize. But mm -hmm. I do believe that the passage along the western and southern coast of Africa, um, the Cape of Good Horn or Horn or whatever. Oh, Cape of Good Hope. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, that is a very, very dangerous route. Uh mm -hmm. And there's like a lot of uh, environmental and um, navigation problems and all of that. And um, that is basically what it's like traveling in between the continents, as well as the fact that the southern continent is a uh, amalgam of... Africa and South America and all of the um, Caribbean islands. And so there is just, you know, tons of tropical storms, uh, you know. And I, and I think, I think, yep, I think we got it. Yeah, I think so, so the travel is very limited, but Tabaxi have a natural wanderlust, much like halflings. 
Um, just like cats in general, you know, you can't, can't keep them indoors. And so, so they got to get out and lots of them have traveled to all points in the, in the world. So it is not unheard of for there to be tabaxi, you know, just all around, but where they come from the the race originally comes from the southern continent so at some point you or your ancestors made the perilous journey in between continents got that got that tanya you're the traveling cat okay <laughs> we, we got all that and then um now zoomed in on the on the uh more you know zoomed in map here you can see that Hallerfold is the capital of Frageshelmir and Greenyard. It's technically the same uh, kingdom. It's just um, Frageshelmir is the proper kingdom name and Greenyard is the new annex that they recently got. And so it's called two different things, but it's all part of the same kingdom. Anyway, uh, Hallerfold is a pretty large, important uh, port trade city that is also home to very fierce warriors. But where you guys find yourselves is uh, down here in Brotnanyod. I probably butchered that. It's probably like Brotnabiod. But uh, anyway, uh, it means the broken land. And for whatever reason, each of you has found yourself here, um, you know, in your in your travels. Perhaps some of you have come seeking, you know, work as an adventurer because this land is plagued with raids from you know orcs and goblins and uh all of that um okay you can okay good mm -hmm. uh and um you know some people have come here uh in order to get cheap land because like nobody wants to wants to live along the border of the horde especially when it's filled with vikings and you know kaldar might want to like fight for it again at some point so uh it, it's it's very easy to claim land here and some people come here because these hills are filled with valuable metals and minerals that can be mined and there's very little in the way of government um that's the whole point of Frageshelmir. they value freedom on an individual level very greatly and although they do have a hierarchy it's more based on military might where it's like a warlord commands an army and they just kind of take over whatever town but the people still very much you know retain all of their land all of their possessions and um you know they can't stop the warlords from doing what they want with their armies but the warlords also like don't just uh go around plundering their own people and so uh if you go and you like start mining something like that's yours and uh so you know you might have come here seeking fame riches uh land or you might have just found yourselves here because you weren't really welcome anywhere else. Perhaps you're a bugbear who doesn't necessarily want to, uh, 
you know, slaughter and raid like some of the other, you know, members of the horde. And you found yourself, you know, on a border town trading with the people and just, uh, you know, moved further into the human lands to be away from all of the fighting. Uh, maybe you're a dragonborn who was shunned by their people or just came here uh, seeking some of the old relics and knowledge that can be found. Old Kaldar was an elven, uh, you know, vassal. They were they were conquered by the elves. And so the ruins around here in the Broken Lands are elven ruins that contain the secrets of old magics and all of that. So dragonborn wizards and and sorcerers might want to come and, you know, find some of that power and knowledge. So just to give you guys an idea of all of the reasons why you might find yourselves here um, before we we have you guys all meet up. And so so as I stated before, it's because of this. The, because the stars have told me to be here for right. some purpose. Right. And so you have a solid grasp on why you're here, but without knowledge of the world, everybody else might find themselves going, ah, well, you know, what's my motivation here? And so I'm just setting them up with the knowledge to be able to, you know, make some decisions because they're going to have an opportunity to role play any of that out. And so before they just go, you know, guessing, I'm giving them some knowledge of the world. That way they can kind of uh, incorporate that into their reasons for being here. So what the heck are you doing here? Uh, also, um, Scout 340, or 3400, uh, the, the, uh, Caledonian Empire had created the Warforged in order to assist them in their fight against the Elves, and so they've been making Warforged for the last, uh, you know, thousand years, 1500 years and 500 years ago is when they kind of fell apart and stopped making it. But, uh, out here there, there were entire regiments that were just abandoned. So you could have been around for like 500 plus years, just kind of abandoned with no purpose here or somebody could have found one of the old forges and created you recently. So that's for you to decide. Um, but with all of that said, does anyone have any questions before we enter Brot Nanbjod and, and uh, begin? So how, how many days... A... Get Sam, you're up. Oh, I... I... Might have missed it. Um, you were coming in a little staticky a, a couple times, at least for me. Um, but what region were gnomes from again? Ah, gnomes, yes. Uh, gnomes also come from the Feywild and Air Thallus when it, when it um, phases over. Uh, but the gnomes also... Uh, you know, have a natural chaos to their lives. And so many of them also settled in the forests of Shayeth Kalora. And so you can come either from Air Thallus and the Feywild or Shayeth Kalora, uh, depending on, on how recently you want to have made it to the uh, prime material plane. You could have either been born here in Shayeth Kalora, or you could have recently phased here from Air Thallus. I 
here with with that LOD. LOD. Yeah. I think I'm I'm pretty pretty set up because I'm right next to my my homeland. Yeah. And you're just you're just a wandering uh, you're just a wandering cat. This sounds familiar. A wandering cat. Where's <laughs> um Shith Kalora from uh, region again? Uh, what region is that in? It's far to the west. In the kingdom of Bretonia, it's tucked okay. into the deep woods. I see it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Any other questions? I think we're good to go. Awesome. All right. And so then... Oops. Nope. Not that map. So I assume we can dispose of the other maps for now. Uh yes, yes, you are you are good on the other maps. Alrighty. So now you guys find yourselves in a small, very small, I'm talking like less than 2,000 people, village, right on the border of the Horde, and, um, you know, as I described, it's, it's very uh, war-torn, especially... Because even though, as I described, the, the free people of Fregeshalmir value their individual rights and all of that, they are still very Viking-esque in that um, they, they have a violent society. And so you guys are here in what amounts to the town square and it is also a market because trade and commerce is extremely important to the people of Fregeshalmir as well. And so here out in the open market, you can find all kinds of um, foods and uh, produce. Um, this is a small village, so there's not as much, you know, manufactured goods. But there are some people who are capable of making uh clothing and um other uh products that that you might you know want to try and and purchase if any of you you know find yourselves in need of um goods that were not part of your uh standard package Mm -hmm. I imagine, like near the roofs of the of the place, be seated on top of of all the buildings and such. It my character sort of set up it, with an astrology sort of set up onto the on the on the to look at the stars. Okay, so I'm going to approach you. Where where are you sitting? Uh, I'm trying to figure out whose character is where. So that is, you've just moved, DM, you've just moved which character? I, that was Gabriel. He moved himself onto the top of a roof. Apparently he has been living here for some time and has built himself a, a small building, a, a small hut that he uses mainly for, 
uh, sleeping and and other storage while he spends most of his time on his roof studying the stars. Yeah. So I will I will call out to him. What are you doing up there, strange man? And I sort of like fumble about like what the legend of Do not scare me like that. I, if you haven't noticed, I'm I'm a bit busy. What are you busy with? Why, why observing the celestial bodies, of course. But it's daytime. He, he points at the sun and says, what do you think that is? What do you think that is? <laughs> <laughs> and I say you shouldn't you shouldn't look at the sun too much. Too. <laughs> I know this. Why do you think I set up myself so carefully? So uh, let me just make sure I have the iconography correct uh, to the dungeon master. I that is my icon that I just moved over towards uh, uh, towards Gabe's. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And he sort of looks down to you and says, "Hmm." If I'm, if my eyes aren't mistaken, you look like a bugbear. Uh, yes, I'm a very proud bugbear of the horde. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here to, I'm here to figure out what the heck's going on. So you, you've come to be an adventurer, huh? I've not come to be an adventurer. I'm trying to understand why the lands north of my kingdoms have been destabilized by crazy people like you looking at celestial bodies. <laughs> I am not crazy. I am an I am an astronomer. What have you discovered? I I'm tr nothing yet. Okay. <laughs> he sort he sort of sees the the dragonborn sort of like put his fingers to his temples and just sort of rub them, <laughs> sort of annoyed by you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just. I'm so. It's just no one. So we have. So I will. I will turn to everyone and say, I'm. I'm here because we have. I've heard of strange gatherings and horrible people that are potentially potentially about to attack our family in the horde. And I'm looking for information. Does anyone have any? Nothing. And 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 I say, and I and I say, well, I might have some information. What can you trade me for it? Ah. Hmm. Well, I don't know what I have to trade, <laughs> but well, perhaps do you, do you have do you have knowledge? I you something. Do you have knowledge of the um uh? ancient ruins that are not too far from here i have i have seen ruins in my <laughs> travels but i would not know who created them or what purposes they served are you here seeking ruins here um <laughs> i don't know um I, i'm i'm here on a uh I'm going to say, uh, exploratory mission, let's say. So you are, you are looking for magics? I am, I am looking for, yes, places of ancient magic. Mm. So that's John. But on, but on my journey here from, uh, where was it that I was from? The Russian place? Kaljeshki uh, Empire. Yes, from, from the Empire, um, I, I did see uh, uh, a lot of suspicious gatherings of people which may or may not be uh, raiding parties that are, uh, you know, uh, coming into your territory. Actually, actually, moving from the Kaljeshki Empire, you would have definitely seen that there was um, armies of the Horde and the Goliaths from Jutunvarold that had been clashing along th those borders and then moving further to the west, 
uh, many of the um, Fragesselmere villages had gathered into one large army along the border uh, just to the east and north of here. Um, okay, what he said. <laughs> Does... <laughs> that this person, right? So this person just appeared. You can, you can role play it. Okay. I talk to this person. You can talk to that person. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait a second. Uh, so, so what can you tell me? Uh, what can you tell me about the ancient ruins near here? Which. I, I can I can only tell you of the existence of the ruins. I can only tell you that I have seen many ruins of previous civilizations, but I have not spent the time to explore them. Uh, have you seen any other people looking for ruins? I, I have not. I oh, have been... you probably have. Adventure, okay. adventure, adventurers come and die out here all the time. Okay. okay. <laughs> What he said. <clears throat> okay. Don't try. Okay, so Tanya, you want to play it? So you've just you've just moved up to this oh. woman here, and you want to say, "Who are you?" Hello. Where do you hail from? Well, I I'm from from this place whose name I'm very bad at pronouncing. <laughs> the I'm I'm from the Broken Lands. Uh, uh, I'm I'm here to sell you any kinds of of rations that you might need because we get many uh, travelers just passing through our small village and they usually need rations in order to you know eat while they are not here. Hmm. Excellent. It's good to know. Yes, I have all kinds of candied apples. And, and they are, you know, preserved in these jars here. And then I also have uh, jerky. It's it's venison jerky. It's good. Yeah, I think lighter fare like uh, jerky would be easier for me to travel with. So I will consider it. Thank you. Oh, don't don't turn away from the the high sugar content, the high caloric content of these candied apples. Oh no, I'm concerned about the weight of carrying the candied apples. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I, I, I will. I, I've overheard the word candied apples, and I'm going to come over, <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to ask the cost of the candied apples. Well, you know, uh, rations are one silver piece uh, for ten, or no, it's one gold piece for ten, so they're one silver piece each. And, um, that's, you know, the jerky and, uh, cheese. And I got some like, uh, unleavened bread type stuff that you can have. Uh, so I got all your basic rations for your standard price, but these candied apples here, these are special and they're worth one gold piece, uh, per jar. Hmm. Um, Ooh. okay, so... I come over and ask, what's what's so special about these candied apples? Well, uh, if I told you, then it wouldn't be my proprietary recipe anymore, but I can uh. tell you that, uh, if you eat these, you, you will feel re-energized. Hmm. Hmm. Um, is, do I, is there any reason why I shouldn't believe her? You can roll insight. It's, I can roll insight. All right, so let's see. On the skill tab? Yep. Yep. Insight. Yeah, look at that. I have a plus three on my insight. Isn't that cool? Okay, so I'm going to take that. I'm going to roll it. 17, baby. Yeah, nice. They call that a dirty 22 when it adds up to 20. Uh, so um, you stare intently you give you give her the uh fry from futurama narrowing of the eyes uh, and can discern that at the very least she believes what she's telling you <laughs> <laughs> okay uh so if i want to buy some food here i've got 
uh, where, where are my gold pieces at? So if you're, for, for those who are just figuring this out here, the character, you want to explain the character sheet, how it works? Yeah. The so, uh, you know, you have your tabs on the side there and then under inventory, you'll see treasure and mm -hmm. each of the boxes you type in, uh, like GP for gold pieces, um, in the, in the line to the right. And then the box you type in how many you have now, typically, uh, you only start with however many gold pieces, uh, your background tells you that you have, but most backgrounds don't give you any gold pieces at all. So, um, what I'm going to allow you guys to do is, uh, something that is from older editions, which is just, uh, a little bit of random starting gold. Okay. And, and so, uh, take the d4 down mm -hmm. at the bottom there and just everybody roll it okay so the d4 no that's, that's a not... d20 oh intelligence check is this the four? Oh, andrea you can well, jump we wanted to make sure that we were intelligent enough to roll a d4 <laughs> Andrea, you there? How do you, how do you roll the dice? Just click on it. Just click uh, on it. The, the just, D four is this pyramid one, right? Yes. The pyramid one. Click and right. drag it into the chat box and let it go. Drag it into the chat box. Oh. And let okay. It go. Roll two of them. That's okay. How did I roll two? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Andrea, did you roll it? Yeah, I rolled. Okay. And Andrea, don't be afraid to. Should I re-roll? Just jump in at any time. Nope. You know, no, nobody needs to re-roll. It's all good. I rolled it. I got a three, but it's not showing up on the chat menu. Oh, then you got to re-roll it. Okay. Uh, it. Make sure you drop it into the chat menu box. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Now, uh, everybody that rolled a one or a two, you get... Uh, that times 10 so 10 or 20 everybody who rolled a three or a four you get that to you get that times five so 15 or 20. where did you roll hmm? what did you roll oh well, that's the problem no you you rolled which character is yours i forget lucy lucy oh you rolled the wrong one so grab grab the four scroll that up there oh lucy rolled a one she she so, rolled the other one later so uh -huh. So, you got 10. Yeah, so 10. So, so everybody who has two or four, you have 20. If you have one, you have 10. If you have three, you have 15. Just put in. So, is that 15, what, gold? Yep. Silver? Yeah. Yep, gold. Okay. So, Joy, on the character sheet, if you go under inventory, there's a space for treasure. You just mm -hmm. type in 10 on a box to the left. And on the right, you just type in. The type of it is so gold would be like GP or gold. Oh well, I yep. get 15, 15, and then I write gold. Okay. Put the, okay. Put the in there in the box. Okay. Have you done yours? Yep. Put ten on there. Now, um, DM. <laughs> yes. uh, so we're all in this town, right? And yes. we're just we've been here. We've either been here for a while or we've just arrived here. Correct. Um, and do. <sighs> Do we each do we get to decide on like what our characters' desires are here, or did you have any right, specific no, things you want to lay out? That that that's what I was saying was you know I gave you an overview, and then you guys can each decide for yourselves what your you know m motivations are here. Okay, but but did, shouldn't we have some kind of common motivation if we're going to be forming some sort of uh, you know group? Uh yes, you will. Oh, okay. If everybody's just doing their own thing, we'll just all go our own way and never see each other again. That would work. Well, okay. I assumed that, you know, um, some of you would have uh, backgrounds that would bring you here, you know, together to some extent. Oh, okay. So, uh, other question for the DM. Um, 
do I know of any stories or tales of um, based on this conversation that I'm hearing? I'm, I'm assuming I'm hearing it. Do I know of any tales of like ruins or ruins of maybe somewhat famous scientists slash astronomers? On your character. Huh? There you go. Well, um, typically those things would be decided with a role for like history, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, however, um, you know, when, when it when it comes down to everything, what what we're looking for right now is uh, just to clarify, for example, uh, perhaps um, the the bugbear had met up with the warforged out in the uh, wilderness and they arrived here together. Uh as as uh before perhaps the eladrin and the gnome both come from uh air thallus uh together or perhaps the eladrin passed through shayeth kalora met up with the gnome and together they they came here um you know from from that uh, route not necessarily has to be that way it could be um, simply that the uh, dragonborn sorcerer met up with the bugbear on her way th from the Kaljeshki empire and and they arrived here together to meet up with the forest gnome who had traveled here weeks ago and had met up with the Warforged on his way through Caldonia and all of that. Uh, the elf just, you know, arrived here randomly, and um, the cat and the astronomer have been living here for months already. You know, just okay. si just simple things like that, that kind okay. of like you know tie some of you together and give a little bit of like your reason for being here in the town you know um like i i don't want to tell you what your motivations are as a character so i'm looking for like who amongst you is looking to be a hero like an adventurer who's who amongst you is just looking to get rich who who amongst you is just looking to like get more power are you looking for magical artifacts or you know to level up in your spell casting or whatever you know just basically like any ties you have to anybody else in the party and what your motivations are okay so my character right. is uh looking for a set of uh adventurers who can uh can protect him because he's weak. Um, I was gonna suggest that me and what is your character's name, Sam? Uh, Pesci. Pesci. Uh, me and Pesci came here together. I can serve as your like, protection a bit, I guess. <laughs> um, um, it would be more than more likely that I would be joining you, and you would not want me around or something along those lines like it was not a not a mutual in invitation type of a deal the character himself is a little annoying okay he is literally a um, um have you ever watched futurama i have seen some of it yeah do you know the calculon character yeah yeah that's him okay <laughs> so i guess i was on my way journey and you kind of followed along and I accepted that you were following along. I know that my character's intent is mainly like exploring more than anything else. Cause she was very like, has only been in the same place for most of her life. And then when it phased back into um, this realm rather than the Fey realm, uh, she just wanted to explore and see what was out there and meet people that she's never met before. So. 
Okay. I'm going to say that my character started from uh, the forest in Britannia. So you might have traveled there to, um, since that area is settled by the Fae. Right. And that's sort of where I ended up joining up with you, seeing as you may be a easy way for me to travel eastward. And, and it would have made sense for you to go to Shayeth Kalora first, since, you know, if if you're going to you know, travel in this new plane of existence, uh, finding like-minded and, you know, people who might be more accepting of you first is a natural starting point. Okay. And I don't know exactly what my motivation, what my character's motivations are for traveling eastward, but I'm assuming it's um, some sort of exploration. Well, as... Gathering stories and tales. Yeah, as a gnome, you're naturally going to be uh, a little bit curious. Uh, gnomes are famous for uh, being, uh, you know, tinkerers and, and inventors. So you have like a natural curiosity about things. And then bards, um, if you if you belong to any of the official bard colleges found throughout the world basically you're charged with going and gathering every kind of information uh and that includes like uh collections of stories collections of poems songs art you know like you're just supposed to go out and gather information and bring it back and so like each bard college has its specialty and they want you to you know gather the knowledge and information associated with that but um you know all of the bard colleges value you know song and poem and and stuff like that as well so you're supposed to create as well as compile as much as you can and the greatest muse is experience and, you know, just getting out there and living life. So in order for you to be the best, you know, bard that you can be, you got to go live a grand life. Right. And you have to spend lots of time in Bard College in New York. Um, Andrea? Sorry, needed to get that joke in there. I bet you Joy laughed at it. I, uh, I got the joke. Uh, Andrea is going to have to drop. So, uh, who can carry her? Another meeting to go to. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I assume the DM can keep sort of moving her character around as we mm -hmm. go to the next room, and I'll fill her in afterwards. Yep. Oh. Okay. Sounds well, good. Well, well, I have a question for, um, for the astronomer. Please save all your questions till the end. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where's my... Where's my... I'm over here with this astronomer on the roof. Yeah. I'm like, hey, astronomer, what is your name again? Uh, Gorakul? He says, oh, a fellow dragon boy. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, so, um, astronomer, in your study of the stars, have you, um, do you have calculations as to when the next, um, quadruple planetary alignment will be uh, uh let me see uh, uh dear what sort of role should i make for that to well i've I heard i've heard tell um of a, a legend that says that there is um that there is a lost city and the entrance to this lost city can only be uh, accessed during a special quadruple alignment of planets. And um, back in, um, you know, Dragonborn land, uh, <laughs> um, we've, we've read the stars there too. And, and our astronomer, who is very old and, and can't travel, <laughs> said, said that this alignment would be um, coming up soon. And if I uh, travel to to this realm close to where the city is that I have a possibility of, of finding it. And have you heard anything about that? Or do you know anything about that? Uh, DM? How would I know this? 
Uh, so, uh, this, this is, this is ad-libbed stuff, so, uh, <laughs> the, the, um, you know, chances, uh, of, of it being, you know, real all just depend on a lot of stuff here, but this much is true. Definitely, she has a mentor who, uh, you know, magic is very much a amalgam of pseudoscience and astronomy astrology and um you know mumbo jumbo and so whether you're a wizard or a sorcerer or a you know um cleric or a warlock or whatever uh the the prophecies and studying of stars and planets and all of that is all interconnected so 100% her her mentor did tell her that there was going to be a rare alignment of celestial bodies that would occur and that when that happened that she needed to uh, be here because you can only see it just like the Northern Lights from certain you know positions in, in the world, and that if she got to the top of one of these hills here, um, uh, we'll we'll call it we'll call it uh, Starfall Starfall Hill. And that she needs to be at the top of Starfall Hill in three days' time in order to witness this. And that she would find someone, you know, with, with a, with a uh, knowledge of the stars. And she believes that to be you. And he sort of, like, sort of ticks off his, like his little glasses that he wears on his snout and cleans them a bit and says, well, that is certainly a very rare occurrence. But I believe, uh, based on the, my uh, current charts, uh, and he sort of pulls out some various scrolls and such, the next one should be in uh, about a week and a half, and a half at the best case scenario or in worst case scenario it's a month hmm. okay well well thank you very much and uh i, I guess i got some time to kill here <laughs> <Wait around. laughs> well, if if you is want i could i i do have some thing some some Sketches and and some things I need to chart and such. Maybe at the different angles of of the planes. Mm. Maybe I tag um, along. No, I'm not too good with math. I I I'm really would rather be out in the wilderness uh, or out out in the world doing something active. So perhaps uh, one of you other. Uh, People here in the village might have, uh, I don't know, a job for me or some kind of uh, assistance that you need that I can that I can do while I'm waiting for this uh, uh, I, celestial alignment. And so, so it's not that I it's not inactivity. It's like like traveling place to place and sort of scanning the uh, the different positions of the stars and, right. and all that. So Cool. We we are going. I'm going to go out, and if people want to join me, you can join me. I am going to seek adventure. I'm going to seek the sources of of conflict of conflict that are here, and perhaps the magic has something to do with it, and perhaps there are other elements that we all can find together. I'm game. Okay. Yeah. Um. Says the cat. <laughs> well, uh, so. Here, here's here's how how this is happening here. Um, I know you guys are eager to to get going, and I do have something uh, set up. I was just giving you guys a little bit of time to like meet and and do all of that. Now, there is, you know, 
uh, the the proposed um, you know alignment and all of that to like get um, Garakul uh, involved in in all of this and we can um, you know incorporate that but right now what is what is gonna happen is you guys go about your day um, Zarash, were you actually going to buy some of the rations from this yeah. peasant woman? Yes, yes. I want to buy some. Uh... I, I would like to buy some, too. This is Kat. The, okay. Uh, the, what was my name? Yeah, me, too. I think I want I want one of those candy apples. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need apples. We need apples. Let's buy some apples before we go out. All right, so... Um, if you if you want rations, it's one gold piece for ten days worth of rations, and then if you want the candied apples, it's one gold piece per uh, candied apple ration. Okay, get your character. All right. So then, how do we pay for things here? Characters, not there. Uh, so you just um, go to your character sheet where it has the uh you know amount of of gold pieces and you reduce it by however many you want and then you can add that many rations and um if you if you are adding a uh candied apple i will show you how to do that wait is that on it i can add candy apple on the inventory page yeah so uh you right click and create item and then you just type in candied apple and then manually reduce your uh candy apple okay. then you man just manually reduce your gold pieces yes sir okay i'm gonna get it's a candy easy. apple and humanoids. 10 Ten days of beef of jerky. Yeah, sorry they don't have any uh, oil for you there, Tin Man. Um, and now I have thirteen gold. We did okay with that. And I have a candy apple. Ten. Uh, okay, so we're gonna. What? Ten days worth of jerky. Right, I'm gonna hold off on whatever purchases until I know specifically where we're going and what we're doing. Scout's very interested in watching all of them anyhow, and all their bantering. Mm -hmm. The desire of candy apples. <laughs> so, so Zarish, are, are we just going out to, you know, scout these armies? Uh, um, not... Well, nope, nope. Well, hold on. I, I, I've, I've, okay. got, I've got an inciting event for you. Oh, okay, I, 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 that was my plan until this exciting event began. No, no, I, in, inciting, 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 inciting. No promises of I excitement here. Come on now. Yes, in, inciting event. Okay. <laughs> yeah. An inciting, exciting event. <laughs> well, you know, excite excitement is not guaranteed. Just incitement. Are we inciting a riot in the capital? Yeah. Oh God, no. Yeah. Uh, I don't even. I'm almost out of power. Okay, inciting event. Uh, so everybody has purchased what they need, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold on, I'll get you. So, get it, go. what? Get it, go. Oh, okay. So, uh, you guys spend the day here in this small, uh, mm -hmm. quiet village, uh, singing songs about what a what a boring life it is in this provincial town and um as the sun goes down and the peasants turn in for the evening and you adventurers are you know still up and about because you live more active lifestyles uh garakul you are you know, setting up your telescope when all of you see a bright blue-purple streak 
cut across the sky. Ooh. It is so bright that it is almost like uh, a small sun. It streaks through the air. It streaks through the air coming dangerously close to where, uh, you know, it, it's like you can you can almost see it streaking overhead. It, it's not far away like like, uh, you know, miles and miles away in the sky. It, it comes streaking down like a low flying airplane overhead and it lights up the entire sky and crashes into the hills nearby and the violent impact causes the ground to shake and a plume of of dust kicks up into the sky blotting out the stars and, and um like it darkens the whole sky Gorak, okay. as an astronomer, have you seen something like this before? Gorak, cool, is just like freaking out and saying, A star has fallen from the sky! <laughs> and he's sort of like, he's trying to search through his notes and see why exactly a star could have fallen from the sky and it just panicked and all that stuff. So clearly the astronomer has not seen this before. <laughs> Goodness. Sounds like something fun to go take a look at. This is how, unexpected. Uh, well, maybe how close maybe... is it to the village? Uh, it's in the hills outside of the village, so you know, um, within a day, but not necessarily like you know, just oh, go walk there, you know, like a block away. I I okay. definitely think we should go and see what fell from the sky. I, I agree. I think that Indeed. sounds like a useful thing to do. Let us go, please. Yes. yes. This but is is it, a, I'm very a, bored. Is it dark? <laughs> cat, is um, cat. I'm a cat. Let me in. Let me out. Let me in. Let me out. <laughs> so it, it is getting dark, indeed. I'm Gorak. My uh, my character is strumming his lute as he's trying to uh draw the attention of people and potentially earn some money and makes up some whatever nonsense facts about the star falling from the sky and um, says, uh, but it'll still be there tomorrow morning. It'd be interesting to see, though. Gora cool and says, this is a very catastrophic event. A star falling from the sky is, is like a prophecy of doom and destruction. It but this must be a, be observed fully. Hey, I, it could it could be a gift from it could be a gift from the gods. Could be a good <laughs> omen. So no. so uh to first uh Pe Peshki, uh you you um begin playing as people are coming out of their homes because indeed uh, everybody woke up from the, from the, uh, you know, violent impact. And as you begin playing, singing the songs of it, roll for your performance. Okay. Where is, so to roll performance, do I just drag it over to the, uh, chat menu or something? Yes, sir. And all the while, Gorakul is sort of yelling, a star has fallen! A star has fallen! This is a disastrous <laughs> event! <laughs> Here it is. Okay. All right, so... I you rolled know, a 12. Yeah, you... But I know this is a captive audience, yeah, so... Yeah, <laughs> you, 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 you do okay. You know, like, uh, a 12 is not, you know... Um, even even average average is 10 so you did you know like above average it, it's not you know the the greatest performance anybody's ever you know seen oh it is the greatest of. performance that this town has ever seen it, it might it might it might yeah. be 
It just might be, exactly. Or you know? it was given by I, Pesci, the greatest of bards. <laughs> right, you know, and and that's what I'm saying is it might not be the greatest performance anyone has ever seen, but here in this town, like they don't they don't have people who can just, you know, play and and sing and and do all of that. So uh you give these guys the performance of of their lives wow ah does he get money good job good job uh well see that's the problem is this town also doesn't like get a whole lot of performers so (laughs) it's kind of like uh you know how, how people from europe don't know to tip (laughs) because <laughs> okay, like... which this point i break into uh tip your witcher <laughs> <laughs> you know i've actually never never heard that but i do know that it's uh toss a coin at your witcher right yeah toss a coin to your witcher yeah 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 so uh okay um you you start singing about how they need to you know like this shit ain't free <laughs> and uh and uh they they like might understand it or they might not i'm going to roll for their wisdom and find out i'll say uh these performances get better with the more candied apples the bard consumes <laughs> <laughs> and the more coins that are shown in front of the bard <laughs> okay Go ahead. Yes, sir, is stomping in front of him and says, How can you think of material things when a star has fallen from the sky? <laughs> Man's gotta eat. <laughs> Guy's gotta eat. I was just waiting for the proper moment for a captive audience. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, uh, rolling their wisdom here, uh, they actually pick up on it and bring you two jars of candied apples as well as um, three copper pieces and one silver piece. That was a pretty good haul. For this town? That's, yeah. Yeah. It's not nothing. (laughs) Okay. And the uh, candied apples are on the items. Uh, no, you just you just gotta right click and add candied apples. They weigh one pound each. Okay, create an item. I got two of them or three of them. Three, th- th- two. Mm-hmm. two, two and three copper pieces and one silver piece. Got it. Cool. So now that you've been yes. paid for your fine, fine singing, can we go see this star? This might have something to do with the destabilization all... of the borders. Is, is it nighttime? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a day's travel, and as you know, is since it... you are from this area, uh, the nights can be treacherous. So it's, uh, so it's nighttime now. Yep. But... I yeah. presume we, we all go to the bar and drink. <laughs> and then start in the morning. No, 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 no. Isn't there a you, tavern you, around you here? Wait, things will get worse. I know it. And I, I, I'm, things like this don't come every year. And it might cause destruction if we wait. No worries, yeah, little but we might, we might fall in a ravine Things have already if gotten go. worse. You keep running your gums. So I, I will buy you a drink, and that should s- at least calm your nerves for the evening. I do not some Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> he started by saying, "I don't drink." You. <laughs> well, come join us at least. Come Is there a bar? Us. You, you uh, so in in this town, what what there what there is is a um brewer and a uh like it's it's not a restaurant it's it's like a a long hall like a main hall like do you guys have anything like an elk's lodge like a mason's lodge like it's like that where like all the people in the town just like show up and eat and drink and well let's head there that sounds good i'm getting hungry Oh, so it's like a beer hall. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, my character's playing, so 
eventually I guess he'll he would wander over once he's satisfied with the his income. Yeah, well, uh, you know, everybody like kind of uh goes there for the evening, you know, meal and and it is a large selection of various meats. There's like some uh chickens, a whole roast pig, uh some auroch. Okay. As well as like uh lamb shanks and and stuff like that. Um mm, lamb shanks. Dragons love shanks. love uh sheep. Yeah, and so <laughs> you know there's there's a lot of meats but then there's also a surprising amount of like um, vegetables and and accoutrement for the for the meats, and then just free flowing uh, kegs of of ale um, and honeyed mead, and uh, everybody like just consumes uh, ridiculous amounts. Great. So we're going to see, we're going to, we're, we're going to, except for the stargazer, but we're going to, we're going to see this celestial event completely hungover. Yes. I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean you guys per se. Like, you know, you, Oh no, no, I meant me. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was just saying like the town, like they, they, gotcha. you know, they go to town. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> all right. Well, I know the time. Well then also the bard is, um, only partakes enough to be part of the, part of the event but we'll still continue trying to make some money off of everything um and i guess eventually meander his way over to a group of adventurers who appear look like who appear gung-ho for going to investigate mm. well uh go ahead and roll another performance now here in the main hall Uh, you're getting marked. Looking, looks like it's okay. What? Bard is performing again. The song is not as good. So yeah. So you are, uh, you know, where people are distracted get, get, by get, food, getting a, <laughs> a a little buzzed, and you forget where you are, and you start to play a very uh, fey song. And everybody just like kind of, you know, ignores you. They're like, whatever. I'm also guessing I'm probably insulting people too, as while well. I'm at it, um, a little bit. It's possible. Uh, but all the while, Gorakku <laughs> is sort of like peeking out the window instead of watching this, the blackened sky. Uh, so, I assume we will stay here for the night and then venture out tomorrow morning. If that's what you wish. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Um, from a timing perspective, DM, is it is it worth uh, turning the clock and getting up in the morning, or should we start that next week? Oh no, yeah, we're 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 up in the morning. Okay. If it's not too much trouble, I would like to come along with you guys. Absolutely. We figured you were we figured you were joining us. You're observing us. You're now ready to come? Ready to join our merry band? Sounds interesting. We are we are, we are well It's always more about... useful to have metal uh a metal meet I mean a, a metal ally to uh a metal a metal ally. Assist. A metal meat ba I mean a metal ally to assist in any sort of adventure. What exactly are the you? The first time I've been called a meat shield. <laughs> hey, that's why he corrected himself in the middle of that sentence. I'm a warforged. I yeah. was built specifically for armies. So they're um they're golems, basically, Brian. Ah, uh, but you you are made of metal as opposed to like clay. Metal depends on the type of warforged. Wood, some leather, okay. all that. Yeah. Gotcha. 
No more Gorak Tool is just sort of packing up his stuff and is ready and readying to head to the uh, the crash site. Yeah, Gorak Tool. Catla is very uh, Catla is very irritated because she was at, uh, ready to go a half hour ago, and you guys are all over over um or hung over stragglers. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Gorak Tool is also like you know putting all of his stuff together in a huff. Okay. All right, so go ahead and put yourselves in marching order as you head off on the road towards oh. uh, the the crash site. Okay, so hold on a second. I got a... Which map is this? It's the map trail. Speaking of crashes. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Did you just yeah. crash, Sam? Yeah, I just crashed. Yeah, I, I think, think Tanya did as well here. Hold on. No, she's still here. But uh, the problem is the map is not... She's not getting the map here. And I forget which... Uh, where do I pull my icon from? It's already there. Yep. It is? Everybody's on the map. I gotta back up. Oh, okay. So all you guys got to do is get yourselves into marching order. We're moving from left to right across the uh, the plane here. You oh, will, yeah, you will, east. you will, you will be, but but we don't want to uh, start moving just yet. Right now, we're just establishing who's out front. I don't recommend the sorcerer being out. I'm gonna front. say I'm out front. Yeah. The bard or the sorcerer That's my job. should be not in front. The bard has a bow, so probably closer to the rear. I would think so. Um, the map, uh, there it is. Um, Andrea's character, she's also an archer. Uh, I believe so, Gabriel. Yes, I'm actually between an archer and a sorcerer. So she's probably in the she, middle. She, me? So she should probably be close to me. I don't have as... I'm not as fast as the rest of you. My movement speed is a little bit lower because I'm a small target. Okay. So... Uh... This is your your marching order, and um, we will. Who's? I I'm just getting you the... guys in an actual square. Okay. Um, all right. Joy, are you all the way in the back? Or are you are you uh, a ranged character? Or are you? No, I was. Oh. I'm here. I'm the one with the orange fire here. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Tanya then is the cat person, right? Tanya's the cat no, person. Cat. Yes. Okay. She's a ranger. Is Tanya, she's a ranger. Okay. Yep. So her taking up the rear is probably also good. I have, a quarter, yeah, that's... I have a quarter staff. This is you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. How does that so look? That looks good. Um, who's to my right? That's just... Joy. This is me. Are you? Okay. You're a uh, wizard, though, aren't you? I'm an acolyte. I have a, I have a quarter staff. That's my weapon. Are you, are you a spellcaster? Uh, yes. Okay. I do have a spell. Um, <laughs> I would like to suggest that you stay by Gabriel, since Gabriel is also a spellcaster. I think. Okay. Is that right? I'm a healer, to be exact. Yeah. And that will be in the front with the fighter. Okay. Yeah. Who's this? Who's this and guy I'll be... with the silver head? Is that you? That's, that's, that's John. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, he's it's the Warforged. War Forge. Okay. Yeah. And you're so then I'll be right behind the two wizards, or not right behind, but near them. And uh, I'm guessing Andrea will be next to me, or near me. And Tanya will be taking up the rear. Does that make sense? Yep. 
So we have some coverage from range from behind the wizards. Mm -hmm. And we have melee in front. All right. I think we're ready. Okay. <clears throat> so. Ranger, roll for perception. So that's Andrea's character, right? She's dropped off? Ah, okay. Wouldn't the bard also be rolling for perception? That's an auto 20, then. Um, the bard? The bard is trained in perception. Uh, right, but, you know, the ranger is probably the one... Uh, keeping an eye out on the road and, you know, doing all the, like, stop and listening stuff. Right? Okay. Can you can you roll for her? Do you want to give I, me her character? No, I, I am. I normally I I would just give you her character, but this is this is going to be the last time I make the mistake of calling for her character to do it. So, it'll be okay. Bye. DM, if it makes it easier, Scout would also be a good option for that. Oh, yes. Yeah, Scout, will you please roll? See, and that's why I don't like rolling for players. Look at that. <laughs> Garbage. Oh, much better. That's how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> so, you spot a hulking figure trying to hide behind a tree up ahead. This large humanoid has a uh, sickening face compared to, you know, what almost all of you except for the bugbear are used to. I suppose the dragonborn, uh, you know, are used to more monstrous races being around as well but like they're also dragons so all of the monkey faces don't look good to them so, so I, DM, how far out of the town are we at this point roughly 10 miles so we travel what half a day about two thirds of a day, so like late afternoon, you know, three, four. Okay. Is it with my off hand? I cup the dragonborn's right arm at the elbow as I draw my rapier and position my so, body to point in the direction of the threat. Okay. Can All we right. tell if this thing is looking to attack us, or is it lost? Like, is this something that is going to be attacking us? You, uh, you don't know. Uh, it It is just trying to hide, as far as you can tell. Okay. Um, well, actually, um, you know, you can try to roll for, for uh, insight... Um, but it's it's hard to see him from the angle that you're at right now, so you're not going to be able to roll it normally. You're going to have to roll at disadvantage. So uh, for for right now, um, you know, you you, sig you signal, you know, that, that you've spotted something, and uh, everybody should roll for initiative, and then you can kind of decide – what you want to do because if you want to roll for insight and tell if he's going to attack you're going to have to like get a little closer or roll at disadvantage or whatever but we'll deal with that so this is you got to take the character sheet right and you roll for initiative based on that correct yes sir okay and that's on the main so on main under initiative i n i t the dice will be right there. Yes. It's right next to speed and AC, right in the middle. Okay, so you got to do initiative. I'm Lucy the cat. You're Lucy the cat, so I'm rolling your initiative. Okay. Right? That's going to determine, oh, that's not a good roll, so you should never have let me roll again. Uh, but Lucy rolled a 20 right I, before I, that. I had accidentally done that because I thought that that was the character that wasn't here. 
Oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay, this is not here. Sorry, sorry, 20. Yeah, I guess I, I depends on how the DM interprets his role. <laughs> no, no, no. I never roll for players unless I have to. <laughs> Even when it's better. So which one? Which one's uh, Andreas' character? Is the Garakul? No, Katla, right? That's me. Oh, that's you. Okay, so it's Garakul. Okay, that's why you rolled that. Okay, fine. So, uh, yeah. So I think everybody's rolled initiative. Except for... Uh, I didn't. Am I supposed to roll? Yes, yeah, so you go to main and you see the little thing that says I-N-I-T. If you drag that into the middle of the chat um, which, window, it'll... Uh, which die am I supposed to be using here? No, you don't use a die. Actually, you go to the character sheet. Oh, okay. And you see where it says I-N-I-T right in the middle of the character sheet under the main. Under you main, click on that yeah. box and then you drag it over to the, um, the chat feature. Okay. Also, I I cleared the ownership. No. I I cleared the ownership of Elodi so that uh, you can control her now. Okay. Okay. I got plus two. Seventeen plus two is what I got. No, 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 no. Nineteen. And, and what two. is this I was rolling for? Initiative. It determines who goes first. Oh. Who's going to be rolling for um, Andrea? I've been rolling average. Yeah, whoever goes and claims that character sheet, and then you can roll initiative and take all her actions and all of that. So I don't, I don't see the character showing in the upper left hand corner here. So I don't know if I can pick it up. It's um, if you click on PCs, yep, it should show up as one of the characters that's oh. selectable. Okay, sure. I'll grab. It. Okay. Yep. Got it. Yep. No, 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 19. All right. So, Elodi goes first. Hey, there you go. All right. So, right now, um, I guess I'm going to go forward. I mean, I, we're all going to go forward here. So, um, I'm just going to move. I got how, how fast is my movement here? Do we want to spend a quick moment to kind of discuss how we're approaching this because it looks like we spotted him before he spotted us. Is that yeah. correct? That is yeah, correct. Think... And also your movement is 30 feet or six squares. So I, I would think as the ranger here, I'm going to end up drawing my bow and I'm going to want to get into some cover. Uh, is that fair? You think, Sam? Um, if she is a ranger, then... Yeah, that would be a good assumption. Um, Where there's one, there might be more. I only correct. So uh, I forget how to measure um, six so spaces. Each one right? of these, each one of these squares that are here is five feet, which is why oh, the, uh, the DM said six square, six spaces right. because that's mm -hmm. enough. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move up here and I'm gonna pull out my bow. I can be ready to attack. Well, uh, because you are within range, you can attack, but because he's behind cover, he has a slightly higher armor class than normal. Well, I'm you not going to attack. Could go, you could ready an action. Yeah. Which is. What, what, what's he hiding behind? A tree. Tree? Can my yes, firebolt just. just... Can my firebolt just burn that tree down? Uh, well, I mean, probably not instantaneously, because a firebolt is not, like, as much fire as you might think it is. Oh, um, okay. So but, I need a clear shot. Right, but uh, uh, it can catch the tree on fire. Also, um, just to be clear here, like, this is very much, like, a a very large man hiding behind, like, a lamp pole. Like, no. <laughs> you know, like he's he's trying to hide behind the tree, but he's doing not so good of a job. And fire um, and brush and trees might not be the best solution. Mm -hmm. yeah, making a setting a fire in a forested path where yeah, there's a town nearby. A OK, I'll keep my fire um, in my so, in my backpack. 
So Catlett, but I think, I think. Sorry. No, no. So it's uh, I. I. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Whose turn is it now? Uh, so right now, uh, everybody um, needs to roll perception at disadvantage. Perception. So the way to do that down the bottom corner of your screen, you see advantage and disadvantage. You'll click disadvantage and you'll do your perception roll. So click that button. And then Uh, my perception roll is going to be where is that? Wait, where do I see advantage and disadvantage? Bottom left of your screen. Left. Bottom left of my screen. ADV and then DIS. You'll Click the DIS. Ah, button. okay. So I say disadvantage. Wait. Skills is where you're going to find your perception. Skills. Tab is skills. Gabriel, have you done yours? Wait. Yep. Skills. skills, that tab. Find yeah. perception. Perception? Mm hmm. On your skills. Just drag it. Sorry, DM. I'm just trying to help out. Oh, no, no worries. Trust me. Very good. Thank you. See where it says that? Four. So grab that. Like this, right? Hold it down. Yep. Click it. Hold it down. Drag it. You've got enough with your notes and everything else that I just yeah. help with that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're all getting used to it here. All righty. So, uh, sorry, I screwed that up. Uh, just roll one more time. Yep. All right. So, um. Nobody notices as a uh, orc sneaks around behind um, uh, Elodie or no Lucy uh, until he's right on top of you, and so mm-hmm. now and now he'll get an attack of opportunity if you try to move. Wow, a really crappy ranger. It's not that you're really crappy ranger, it's that this is what's a good this was an orc that hid well. That's right. Well, and you guys were all focused on the ogre. Mm-hmm. So that's why you had disadvantage. It was just, you know, unfortunate mm-hmm. circumstance. So uh all right, so who's so in the battle sequence here? It's now Kotla's turn? Correct. Okay. And so, so you, a... you would have disadvantage trying to strike him because... Uh, or no, not disadvantage. He just has plus two to his armor class because he has cover. Uh, or you can try to get a unobstructed unob- uh, line of attack. To... So, so, so Joy and so Sam, with... if you don't... If you don't know this, there's a little um, two swords in the upper right-hand corner. If you click on that, the combat tracker shows up, and it gives oh, you the order. Of- I'm so sorry. I forgot to tell you guys about the combat tracker. Yeah, so the two crossed swords, that's your combat tracker. That's going to uh, have all of the information for you in, in combat. Uh, your initiative is the first number. Next is your current hit points, then your maximum hit points. After that is any temporary um, hit points that you might have. And the final box is the total amount of wounds that you have. Um, All you really need to worry about is that first green number. That's your current number of hit points. If that is reduced to zero, you are unconscious if that is reduced to negative as many hit points as you uh, have, you're dead. Okay. Um, so what am I using to fight this guy? My firebolt spell, or am I going to hit him with my quarterstaff, or what's the deal here? Well, you're probably going to want to use uh, one of your, your spells, and um, your most powerful spell is thunder wave or or burning hands but because you might uh get attacked you might just want to cast mage armor on yourself this round and then Uh, and then get into a position where you have a better uh line of sight by moving up to where uh 
uh, who is that? Um, Elodie moved. Okay, so what do I do? Just drag mage armor over to the chat thing? Uh, yeah, so you see where where you are. Do you have the combat tracker open now to where? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so drag mage armor onto yourself. In the combat tracker? Yes. Uh, nothing happened. When I drag it, is it that little red dragon at the end I'm supposed to do? Uh, no, I do believe that just... it is... Okay, so you click on the magnifying glass to the right. Ah, okay. And then you see where it says effect mage armor? Right. Drag that. Boom. Okay. And then you can end your turn by clicking the. Uh, oh well, first, are you gonna move up by by Elodie there? Uh, sure. You don't have to. I'm. I, that's just a, a suggestion. Yeah, because I'm. I'm gonna end up moving up to go directly after the ogre, and I assume that um, that uh, um, everybody else that's down a little bit farther south, like Scout, I assume you go south to go after the, uh, go after the orc. Divide and conquer. All right. Suctions will make an ass of us. So, yeah, I know. so now you can end your turn by clicking the uh, dragon head with the down arrow at the bottom. And then just that so everybody knows, all of the boxes at the very bottom, 1 through 12, if you drag and drop that dragon head into any of those, that corresponds with your F keys. And so if you want to drag it to like the one box, then you can just push F1 to end your turn anytime you want. Or, you know, F12, if whatever, whatever one is more comfortable for you. And then that way, instead of having to go and, you know, click on the combat tracker all the time, you can just push one button. Okay, so where's our dragon head? Uh, at the bottom of the combat tracker. Bottom left. Oh, turn look complete. Okay, that's yep. a dragon head, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know it's not a great dragon head, but. <laughs> okay. All right, and then uh, now you guys don't have to roll perception because the other orc got up on you, and so this one does the same thing, um, but they can't attack. Okay, so so it sounds like, it looks like uh, maybe we should both go south. Uh, am I in range of getting to either of those orcs? Uh, I think so, yeah. So I can, I can get there and I can attack at the same time? Yes. Okay. I, so, I, either of them. Okay, so I'm going to move to... What's my what's the attack range that I need to be at? Uh well you need to be right next to them if you're making a melee attack. Okay. So then I'm gonna try to go to my If you attack the one in between you guys, you have flanking and therefore advantage. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh so I'm using um okay, now I gotta remember how to use actions. So... I'm gonna use my Hand axe? Yep. So first, uh, control left click on him to target him. Right. Got it? Nope. No, I'm, no, I haven't done it yet. Oh, I got to click myself first, right? And then I got to do, whoops. Possibly. Now? Uh, no. Hold on. Let me try it again. Oh, let me just get a little bit closer here. What? I'll be back in a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess I'm as bad as close as I'm going to get. All right, let's try it again. So I've got myself, and then I'm, I'm going to do... Uh, problem is I'm in control of two characters. Does that make a difference? Mm, it shouldn't. Uh, 
Let me see. Are you accidentally clicking the other one? No, I don't. I don't see that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna do it for you for now. Okay. All right. There you go. A uh, little arrow thing. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna use. Uh... I'm struggling with targeting too, so I don't know if it's a programming side. Mm -hmm. Well, when it's your turn, it should just automatically have you selected to be able to to get them. So, anyway, okay. uh, you forgot to click advantage down at the bottom, ADV. Yep. Uh, so now don't click advantage, but just roll the attack again. Okay. You already hit, but you might get a critical. You never know. All right. No critical. That's fine. Okay. Now, now roll the damage. Yep. And you can see that the orc is wounded. Hmm. Cool. Okay, so now I get rid of that, and it goes down to Gorakul Noryuxius. Who's that? That's me. What are you gonna do? Going the thunderclap that that orc, and he's going to say, "You know, it's quite rude to attack attack travelers. Maybe I should teach you some manners." Okay. Looks like you got him a little bit more wounded. Can you tell? Health bar. Yeah. So uh, everybody is deafened by the thunderous clap. And do uh, you just end your turn? Did you move? Yes, I did. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, I see where you went. Okay, yeah. I, I imagine it sounds like a sort of like a sound of the comet. Hmm. And then you got Pesci who is uh, up. Oh, no. Yeah. Orcs. Uh, so the orcs work. continue yeah. to pour out of the woods. Great. Over there. Okay. Um, I guess the first thing is, uh, looks like they don't... are there any additional orcs that are coming through? Roll for perception. Specifically, I want to know if there is a direction that is that orcs are not coming from, so I can right. potentially guide us in that direction. <laughs> Oh, wow, I rolled terribly. Yeah, you can't tell um, that it, there could be dozens of them coming out of these woods. Yeah. Okay. So. Let me double check this one. Creatures within 20 feet of a point within range are affected in ascending order of their current hit points. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to hold off on that spell for now. Um. Okay, so this orc that is below... Okay, I see this one. Okay, so what I think my character is going to do is I'm going to use Vicious Mockery on the orc that has not... Um... Is this orc gone yet? Is this... Which orc is this? So this orc that's below uh, the one orc closest to, that's adjacent to Brian and I guess this is Tanya. Which orc number is that? There's the uh, one in the forest, and then just, there's the uh, one, just there's two next to each other. Just control, left click on whichever orc you're targeting. 
Okay, that is which orc is this one though? That's orc one. Orc one. Okay. So orc one is at the top of the turn order. Um, so my character will say, "No wonder why you are hidden." Uh, that's a face that I don't even know if a mother would like, and <laughs> uses vicious mockery. Uh, where is vicious mockery? Here it is. How do I add it? How do I add so it over first, to the? Yep. So first, there it is. Okay. First thing that you want to do is click on the magnifying glass. Yep. And then uh, you'll see where it says save. You drag that over the wisdom DC twelve. Yep. Oh, I failed. Now, uh, drag over the. Damage, damage, damage. Probably not going to do much. No, but now drag over the effect. Oh, yep. man, now I have disadvantage on my next attack roll. Yeah, you guys are welcome. Um, I'm moving. Let's see. <laughs> uh, I will... Brian, since you are... Big and strong. Um, yeah. I'm going to give you. Uh, I'm going to give you um, bardic inspiration with my bonus. I like it. Which you can choose one skill or attack roll or saving throw, and you can add a d6 to it. I don't remember if this is something that you can do in response to your roll, or if you have to choose before you roll if you're going to use it or not. Uh, DM, we'll figure it out when I come back around. Uh, the, the bonus, uh, you, you just, it gets used on your next, uh, attack or save or whatever, you know, roll. Sounds yeah. good. So I will move then one, two, three, four, actually this would be three, four. I'll move over here and I will end my turn. All right, and I think this is the last of the orcs. Uh, he, or no, there's one more. He uh, comes popping out in front, trying to block your path. And then the ogre was supposed to be the one who jumps out, so he gets confused, and he just uh, charges straight at whoever's in front. That'd be one of his orcs. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a distance. Okay. So who's Lucy? Me. Ah, okay, so we got to attack. We got to figure out where you are, right? And then we got to figure out what I'm we're going to do with you. in trouble. You're in trouble, but we're going to attack the... Um, here, watch that. May I suggest using your claws? Ooh, that sounds like fun. One second. So we're in a combat tracker here. Get that out of the way. Okay, so we're going to see if we can target this, this orc, because you also would have a flanking advantage here as well, right? Mm -hmm. So this is control... Well, I'm on a max, so we're going to see how this one works. Is it command? No. Is it control? Yes. All right, so I'm going to right-click on. Uh, can't seem to... Is that... Hold on. Is that actually working? Well... <laughs> so just for you guys to know, I, I set it up so that the that next orc that's next to you, you don't need to worry about him as much because I gave him disadvantage on his attack roll. So he should be... It should be safe to ignore him this next turn, okay. for this remainder of this turn. Okay, so now I'm trying to target. I got it. Okay, now I've targeted this. So is he saying I shouldn't go after him? Or no. Go after the other guy. No, no the one that I targeted. You don't. You shouldn't have to worry about this turn. So you okay. can focus on the one that's between you. Yeah, you okay. want to focus on that one, right? Cool. So now actions. We're gonna go over to actions. So these are your options, right? You've got cat's claws. You got daggers. You got your longbow. But you're close. You're gonna go cat's claws, yeah, right? Definitely not longbow. Okay. Um. 
Well, the issue is you get um, with dagger, you get a plus six. You probably want to use the dagger because you're okay. right next to him. So what you want to do is drag it. You do it. Drag this into there. Right in here. There you go. 13. Good. Hit. Okay, so then you take that. You see it says 1d4 plus 4 spear piercing. Grab that. Wait, that hold, wait, hold on. Hold on. Because you're flanking, you were you were supposed to attack with advantage. Ah. Huh. Do I do it again? So now just roll again, but next time at the bottom of the chat, there's ADV and DIS. That's advantage and disadvantage. And so uh, whenever whenever you attack with advantage, you just click that ADV and it'll roll it automatically. All right. Okay. So you don't worry about it saying miss. Mm -hmm. Now you just roll the damage because you hit on the first one. Yes. Yep. Let's go. Same thing. Drag it. Okay. Boink. And now he is heavily wounded as your dagger stabs into his shoulder as he was turned to face Zarash, the bugbear warrior. Ah, it's okay. That's all right. Because we're ready to go. Now we got to just get rid of you. are going to move your turn. All right. This is you moving your turn. Rarf. Okay. Turn complete. Okay. But now the scout's got a shot. The scout's like, uh, I'm not with these guys. <laughs> and it runs away. I picked the wrong party. Okay. Picked the uh, wrong party. Sorry, John. Welcome. <laughs> I look I look back to the south. I see that that's handled. I'm more worried now about two of the north. I agree. So I will advance that one. And because I'm within five feet of another player, I have sneak attack. Very sneaky, sir. Oh, that's a hit. There we go. The ogre is wounded. Well done. No, he's not dead. He's, he's damaged. So to the DM, we're gonna I, um, we have to draw this to a close. At least uh, this these three people do here oh, for no. today. Um, can we pick this one back up next week? Uh, well, we can. I mean, we we have one more turn to get through, and then and then we'll be at the end of the round. So, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, turn? I'm sorry. What what other turn do we have left? Uh, there's one one more orc. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is is this the time that you guys need to end uh each week? I just want to make sure that I plan everything out. I thought I had another half hour, so. Um, no, I think I think we're talking about between two and two and a half. I don't think Joy, you don't want to go to three, right? Um, no, two two and a half is fine. Although on the last Sunday of the month, um, I have a standing call that I have to be on, so I'll only be here for about an hour. Okay. But that's not next week. That's week after. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not an issue at all. I just, um, you know, I, I thought I had another half hour to run this combat. So I, I wasn't worried about the time. Um, anyway, uh, that is the end of round one. We'll pick mm -hmm. up with you guys is still in the middle of combat next mm -hmm. week. And we will uh, get right into it without having to go through, you know, the introduction like we did this time. So there'll be more opportunities to do stuff. No, this uh, is good. I, I think the, 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 the context setting was good. I think we understand the characters. I think we, we understand the world here a little bit yeah, better. Hopefully John's not too annoyed. <laughs> um, I'll be unable to make it next week. I'll be in Tahoe. Um, Ooh, nice. I'll be driving right. back. So... We'll, um, we'll take your character and we'll play it. Yeah. The yeah. only thing I'm thinking of is Tasha's hideous laughter on the ogre. <laughs> That's a good option. All right. So, Gabriel, are you going to remember that? Uh -huh. Do you want to play Sam's character for him next week and play both characters? Sure. Okay. All right. So, you got to remember that. To make sure the hideous laughter. You got to remember the hideous laughter because we can do hideous laughter, right? Can you give me an interpretation of hideous laughter? Tasha's hideous laughter is um, it basically wisdom save and if they fail they are stuck laughing until i break concentration or until they get attacked so I like basically it. take out the ogre until yeah. we take care of the orcs 
Exactly. It's a lockdown type of move. Anyway, uh, I want to thank you guys for playing. I want to thank anyone who's watching. And as always, everyone, good, good game. game. <laughs>